And so we're ready to go. Chris Chambers will kick it off for Georgia Southern. Kevin Quinlan and little Adrian Zulo are standing deep. As you take a look at Mr. Chambers, Zulo, number two on the left of your screen, weighs 138 pounds. It's a short kick. It'll be Quinlan from his own seven yard line. Up the sideline and down at about the 32 yard line and trips way to the left side, including the big left tackle, Cliff Bolden. And passing off to the right side, up to the 36 or 37 yard line, that's the tight end, Kerry Taylor. Straight up the gut is Marcel Ship across the 40 to the 45 yard line, and that should be the first first down of the ball game. Well, as you pointed out at the top, Charlie, this is not going to be a defensive struggle. In Massachusetts, they had intimated the possibility of going with the no huddle. That's exactly what they're doing here after their initial first down. Both teams are fun to watch. They come out with both barrels ablazing. And here's Bankhead's first pass and the second pass of the day. Underneath to Matt Jordan, the fullback, and he's across the 40. Five yard line and that should be enough for another first down for the University of Massachusetts. Josh Smithers the middle linebacker made the tackle. Charlie there are a lot of fullbacks throughout the nation that are they they give lip service to the idea that they can catch the ball but Jordan 46 catches for 552 yards. That's 11 yards a catch and for a running back that is outstanding. He's the one that had the big 49 yard catch for a touchdown last week in their victory. And now the hurry up offense and here's Marcel Schiff and Schiff is finally brought to Harbor at about the 34 yard line and another first down. Well everybody was talking about Peterson coming into this game but Schiff is certainly no slouch he pointed out 177 yards he gets held up right behind his own man cuts to the outside he's got some speed to go the distance. Well, one thing Massachusetts wants to do is get as many points into the bank as early as possible because they know that Georgia Southern team has averaged 44 points per game. And here's Bankhead throwing underneath to the tight end Taylor, and he is run out of bounds at about the 27 yard line. Bankhead is now three out of three. Kerry Taylor is not your typical tight end in terms of college ability. 72 catches now on the season. That's an awful lot of balls for a tight end. 6'2, 250, a dominant player, somebody that you just cannot go man for man with a linebacker. And I know how partial you are to pass receiving tight end. On second down, here's Schiff. And on second effort to the third or to the 25 yard line, appears to be about a yard shy of the first down. Tony Butler, the outside linebacker, 65. With the tackle. Charlie, as Mark Whipple pointed out, too, we are, we are in four down territory. So if they get stuffed here, they're still going to go for it. They, their kicker has struggled this year and they're out with a no huddle. I mean, this is truly a, a no holds barred offense. On third down and less than one. Chip, first down and then some. Inside the five and down. He's in. Touchdown. Marcel Schiff, 25 yards, and UMass quickly on the board, six to nothing. Great blocking at the point of attack for UMass, and a missed tackle by Kawaki Thomas enabled Schiff to go the distance. Watch the left of your screen right here. Kawaki Thomas just makes a really poor effort. His feet go out from underneath him, and as we pointed out, Schiff has the speed to go the distance. Big. Big forearm, he crosses the pylon. The official says, why not? Give him six. Jason Cherry with the extra point try. Seven plays, 67 yards, and two minutes and four seconds, and it's 7-0 Massachusetts. On the Marcel Ship 25-yard touchdown run, Ship four carries, 46 yards, 46 of the 67 on the ground from a man named Ship. You know, Charlie, one of the things that surprised me, quite frankly, is that because both teams are so offensively minded, why is it that Georgia Southern would defer? You, the reasoning, of course, is usually your offense has such a slow time getting started, but in this case now, uh, clearly Massachusetts held its serve. You know, we, we mentioned early that, of course, there was some uh, rain here overnight and up until really about an hour before kickoff. And we saw the feet go out from underneath Kawaki Thomas, the cornerback for Georgia Southern, who might have had the tackle on ship. 
but he lost his footing and so that's something we will keep an eye on throughout the day. Seven plays 67 yards. And Marcel Ship has powered the Minutemen. You know what would be cool here? Onside kick. You know both coaches are so wide open and so unabashedly flamboyant in their offensive mindset. And Mark Whipple, the former quarterback and later head coach at Brown University in his first year at University of Massachusetts. So his team, the decided underdog coming in with the early 7 0 lead. And Benny Cunningham standing deep. He and Javon Sullivan. End over end kick, it's short. Fielded at the 10 yard line. And Sullivan is down at the 21 yard line. And the right guard, 68, Mark Williams, has a chance to play on Sundays, but his coach Paul Johnson seems to think it will be at the center position. The option play goes nowhere on second down and 10. Well, here's Greg Hill, and Hill's got a hole. And finally run out of bounds at about the 38 yard line of the University of Massachusetts. And so Hill picks up 41 on the play. Charlie, when you think of great option quarterbacks, names like Jack Mildren or Blaine Morgan come to mind. Hill cuts up, shows the speed, cuts to the outside. Don't forget, Charlie, this is a guy that scored 22 touchdowns now. I mean, he is, as Mark Whipple pointed out to us, he's a tailback playing quarterback. As a starter, he has led the Eagles to a 19 and one record. The handoff is to Adrian Peterson. And so Peterson doesn't get much on the play. The outside linebacker Matt Dawson made the tackle. Well they want to get Peterson going obviously but if the concentration is going to be to stop Peterson which it appears to be early on with the front seven the Hill is going to have a number of great opportunities on the flanks. Peterson gained three on the play. Adrian has rushed for at least 100 yards in every game this season. This is Cunningham and Cunningham is brought down inside the 30 yard line by the cornerback Mike Smith. And Mike Smith does a great job because what happens here is that if the lead block is, is made here in this case by Audrell Grace he goes the ways but Grace doesn't do it and down he goes at the 29 yard line once again Charlie I can't help but think. We're looking in four down territory. <laughs> this is fun. Every place is four down territory with these two teams. It is third down and two yards to go. They give it to Peterson. And there's a fumble, and UMass has the football. Charlie, you could see at the handoff. You could see at the handoff, he was just a little bit uncertain as to whether or not to pull it out. Hill just can't quite decide. Watch right here. Look at the indecision. Looks like he might pull it out, and then he suddenly he doesn't. And right there, that's where the ball falls out. Peterson never had it. And the recovery for the Minutemen, a big turnover. 98 Aaron Parker with the fumble recovery. And so UMass, the underdog with the early lead and the recipient of the first turnover of the game. Here's Bankhead throwing long over the middle, incomplete, intended for little Adrian Zulo, the five foot seven inch, 138 pound freshman wide receiver from Papano Beach, Florida. When you have an option offense, off times it is difficult to, to make those decisions. Look at that, you can see right there, he never has the ball that's on his hip. Price does a nice job of getting in there, forcing Peterson not to get a second chance to recover the ball. As a result, Massachusetts in, good, in a good situation here up 7 zip. Second down and 10 yards to go. That's Steve Lay in motion. And Ship in motion right up the middle. And he picks up about seven on the play. So Marcel Ship has uh, come out and he has made an impact early. Charlie, this is a big third down, too, simply because of the fact that if, if they can get the first down, then the momentum stays with them. Otherwise, Georgia Southern, with a three and out against a high potent offense, would feel a lot better about themselves and that fumble. Five carries, 53 yards for Ship, the sophomore from New Jersey. 
Bank hit the throw for it. Quickly over the middle. Does he have enough? Looks like Matt Jordan's going to be very close to the first down, maybe a shade shy. It will depend on where they mark the football. I really trust that young man's hands. That's a first down. Well, they got the first down. Got the favorable mark at the 39-yard line. Once again, interesting enough, Charlie, they went with the no huddle, forcing Georgia Southern to keep the people on the field. They can't make any situational substitutions. That's, be, that's a problem right now for the Eagles. We really haven't seen a huddle as yet. Here's Ship. And he gets maybe three on the play. We were led to believe just before game time that the University of Massachusetts would be playing a high tempo offense, even higher tempo than usual, when they informed the referees that, hey, we're going to come out with a lot of no huddle, so you guys be prepared. Then and only then were we made aware that we may be into this high octane offense, even higher octane than usual. On second down and seven, they have to get to the 49. Their own 49. Ball is tipped in the air. Incomplete. It'll be third down. Little pressure that time. Davis is able to get to the quarterback. We got a man down, Charlie. An injured minute man. Can't see as yet who it is. 78, the left tackle, Cliff Bolden, junior from Shirley, Massachusetts. Starting left tackle, 6'4", 285. Good pressure, on the part, good pressure on the part of Georgia Southern coming up the middle. That would be costly because Bolden is having to deal with Davis, their star player. There's the tip pass. Everybody's supposed to yell, Peter, 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 just in case the ball, somebody's within the vicinity, but nobody is there, and Bolden seems to be in a lot of pain. It appeared to be the guy who tipped the ball was the guy who was being blocked at the line of scrimmage by Bolden. And 94 is Eric Davis, who has started every game for Georgia Southern in each of the past two years. And boy, has he put up some numbers. You mentioned the 14 sacks, 25 tackles for loss, and four forced fumbles. 94 is a player. Well, here's a good sign. Bolden is up. And he's walking himself off and looks like he's going to be okay. And so now on third down, and seven yards to go, they need to get to their own 49-yard line. Bankhead in the shotgun joined by Matt Jordan in the backfield and trips to the left side. Well they give it to Jordan the up back and that fools nobody. They lose three on the play. Tony Butler 65 in on the tackle along with Eric Davis and so on fourth down here comes the first punt of the afternoon. Georgia Southern did an excellent job of guessing right in terms of the gap blitzes. They came with both backers in the seams and Jordan had no place to go. Corey Joyner stands deep back at his own 20 yard line awaiting the punt from Andrew McClay who's averaged 42.8 yards per punt. It's a good one. Sending Joyner all the way back to the 10 yard line and brought down at the 10 yard line. Dan Healy's the man pursued down. Great job. It's so much harder now Charlie because of that two yard halo that they have in college football. He did a great job of timing it up just right, putting Georgia Southern in terrible field position. A 45-yard punt, minus three on the return. We're talking about this little halo. Now, he, you know, more confidence for returners now because of the fact that they know that they're protected. But in Joyner's case, the timing is just right. Take a look at that. Catch, hit. Well, that's a great job. On first and 10, at the 13-yard line. This is not what Georgia Southern had in mind. Georgia Southern 14-0 coming into the season or coming into the game. The heavy favorite to win it now down 13 to nothing. Man, oh man. Take a look at Hill, basic play. Here he comes out. It's going to come off his hand a little bit. Look at that. It really stumbled off his hand. And it, what a precipitous bounce. Bounced right up to IE. Terrible pitch on the part of Hill. He just couldn't get it out of his hand. 
And at the moment, Georgia Southern can't get itself out of the way. And UMass with an early 14 to nothing lead. Holy IE from Nashua, New Hampshire, the leading tackler for the Minutemen. The nine yard fumble return, and it's 14 to nothing, UMass. Well, this is Charlie. I, I, my guess is, is that anybody that knows anything about 1AA football wouldn't have imagined with 829 remaining in the first quarter, they would have thought, well, okay, GSU up 14 maybe, but not UMass. Certainly not. You know, in talking to the two head coaches yesterday, we always ask them, well, what do you think? Can you win if you don't turn it over? Well, in the case of the University of Massachusetts, they felt they needed some help because, after all, Georgia Southern, with all the points that they put on the board this year, 48, averaging 48 points per game in the postseason in their three wins. UMass figured they needed some help, but at the moment, Georgia Southern has been overly generous. The Southern hospitality has been taken a step too far. Well, I'll resist the temptation of saying the holiday season is forgiving, but nonetheless, Georgia Southern is doing everything they can to afford largesse to the Minutemen. And UMass at the moment has been unforgiven. And here comes Georgia oh. Southern. And finally out of bounds is Benny Cunningham, and a flag flies after the completion of the play. A 39-yard kickoff return for Benny Cunningham. What a move he made there at about the 30. Looked like it, looked like it might have been a face mask. It is. But what a great move. Take a look at the move right here. Oh, <laughs> just, just left in his tracks. That, Taran Hunter just gets jocked completely, and of course the kicker there saving the day at the end. Kickers, of course, in this case, Mackley, not really Play thrilled about that, not terribly stylish, but all they're concerned about is getting him out of bounds and getting him down. So with the five-yard penalty now, Georgia Southern has its best field position of the game. It's first and ten. At the 47-yard line of UMass. And on the pitch, here's Gerard Freeman, and Freeman to the 40-yard line. The wide receivers and slot backs for Georgia Southern, Charlie, have to be blockers, and they have to be good blockers for the option to work. The first couple of times in the series, it didn't. That time, they were able to get somebody down on the ground, allow for some lanes, and now they come up second and short. Remember, Charlie, this is a team that averages more than seven yards on first down. 7.7 on second down and three. Bill calling an audible. He's going to take it himself. And here's Hill down the sideline. Hill's going to take it in. And we welcome you to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where Georgia Southern, down 14 to nothing, has just gotten on the board with a 40-yard touchdown run by their option quarterback, Greg Hill. Take a look at the block right there. Pow! By Grant Chestnut as he drops Kari Samuel, their All-American, to the ground. And Hill, a tailback in a quarterback's position, goes to the house. Now the extra point try for Chris Chambers. Chambers on the season now is 78 out of 81. 81 touchdowns for Georgia Southern. And so far, in the first seven and a half minutes of the game, three touchdowns. Two for UMass and one now for Georgia Southern. On the 40-yard touchdown run by the 5-foot, 11-inch, 163-pound option quarterback, Greg Hill. What a competitor that young man is. He's the second fastest player on the team, Charlie. Supposedly he was timed in 4.44. 60% in his throws. That's his 23rd touchdown of the season. I mean, that's certainly what the doctor ordered for Georgia Southern because they were struggling. That's Todd Christensen. I'm Charlie Steiner, and we welcome you to Chattanooga, Tennessee, 
Lewis Johnson is with us. We'll be introducing you to him down on the field in just a moment. This is the Division One AA Championship game. You are looking at the head football coach of the University of Massachusetts, 41-year-old Mark Whipple. Last year, UMass had a record of two and nine. A year ago this past Wednesday, at his introductory press conference, he said he was going to take his team to the championship game. Nobody expected him to do it this year. But what a remarkable ride it's been for UMass, 11 up and three down on the season. For Paul Johnson, this is his second year at Georgia Southern. Under Johnson, the team has a record of 24 and three. This year, 14 and 0. And between these two teams, they have averaged 77 points per game. So if offense is the name of the game on this day, it's in a witness protection program somewhere. On the kick return, the ball is down. UMass will maintain possession first and 10 at their own 18-yard line. And Charlie, if momentum like a lady is fickle, you'd certainly have to say that things have changed. 14 to nothing, everything going the Minutemen way, and suddenly after the 40-yard touchdown run, and stuffing the runner inside the 20. Georgia Southern starting to feel a little bit better about themselves. The next huddle that UMass has in this game will be their first. They've been playing hurry up offense through their first two possessions and it's paid off for them handsomely scoring two touchdowns each of the first two times. Here's Bankhead pass to Marcel Ship, and Ship has some room. Ship is now finally brought down at the 40 yard line. Marcel Ship the tailback on the ground is averaging almost six yards per carry or 177 yards per game. This is a good this is a good call by Mark Whipple because they're able to catch Georgia Southern in a blitz. And when you have the screen pass and the blitz, that's fewer people in the secondary, obviously. And Chip with his running ability gets it out to the 40 and gives the Minutemen some breathing room. And UMass without the huddle, first and ten at the 40-yard line. Bank hit, Juco transfer, the quarterback passing over the middle, and it's complete to the 45-yard line. A pickup of five on the play to the wide receiver, Jimmy Moore. It rained overnight. The field is soggy. We have seen some indications of slippage. It's 44 degrees. We may see some more rain before the day is done. It feels like a winter's day on the outskirts of Lookout Mountain, Tennessee. Uh, second down and six. Here's Marcel Schiff cutting back. And the ship is across the 45 to the 46, about four yards shy of the first down. Benji Harris, the defensive left end, made the tackle. Charlie, you mentioned the weather. It really has already had an effect on the game. Remember on Chip's touchdown run, Kawaki Thomas was sitting in the hole and could have made the tackle slipped and fell and enabled Chip to go the distance. And I can't help but think that it must have been a wet ball on that pitch by Hill that IE took in because it went out of his hands about a yard and a half and bounced up. So even though things appear to be not that problematic, still there's enough slickness on the field to cause some, to cause some issues. It was a heavy, steady, drenching rain through the night that ended just before kickoff. Bankhead's pass is incomplete, intended for the tight end, Terry Taylor. Now I want to introduce you to our third man, Lewis Johnson down on the field. Lewis. Charlie, thanks. You guys have been talking about the field conditions down here. You know, overnight we did get a lot of rain up until about noon today, but underneath this field, this is a prescription athletic field. There is a drainage system that can handle about 10 inches of rain an hour. Well, your speculations are right. It is a little slippery. It's not very wet. These are some divots I found uh, at the beginning of the game after warm-ups. But players are having a bit of a problem with this field. Nice punt by Andrew McClay that will bounce inside the five-yard line and down at the one-yard line. About 97 yards in front of the Georgia Southern offense there. And right up the gut is Adrian Peterson. And another fumble, and UMass has the ball again. The third turnover in the first quarter, this time deadly at the six-yard line. Recovered by Coley Ie. It was Ie who rambled home nine yards with a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Now he's got the ball at the seven-yard line for UMass. Well, Charlie, this time it wasn't a bad handoff. I think it just got ripped out. In this case, it's Kari Sammy, the All-American, who just separates the ball from Peterson and Ie on top of it. Look at that. Kicked up into his midsection. Wow, good fortune for Massachusetts. And so now the Minutemen 
with a 14-7 lead already. Three turnovers in the first quarter, and we still have five minutes and 11 seconds to go. Pitch out. Option. Zulo, touchdown! Jamie Houston, or Holston, the backup fullback, with the pass, and Zulo, the freshman wide receiver who weighs about 138 pounds with the touchdown, and it's 20 to seven. Is it just me, or is this a little bit strange? On the seven yard line, you go with a fullback option pass? I mean, this is bizarre. But as they say, you can't fight effectiveness, and it's a touchdown from Massachusetts. Wow. And now the extra point for Jason Cherry. 21 to seven. Yeah, last year, Zulo won the National High School 100-meter championship running a 10-4-3. And as his head coach, Mark Whipple, was saying the other day, he's just a football player. He's not a very big one, but he's a football player. He comes out, he plays hard, and you saw the fine catch that he made. Here's Benny Cunningham dropping it at the 8, picking it up at the 10, and down at about the 25-yard line. So Georgia Southern, after the touchdown reception by Adrian Zulo, now trailing by 14 points. Take the hat off, say hi. Charlie, I've noticed that on the sidelines, after every time this has occurred, Paul Johnson, the head coach, has been upbeat. He waves the people off and said, don't panic, there's a long way to go in this game. He pointed out to us in our meeting that they've been behind before, but certainly at this point, I don't think, Charlie, they've had the kind of adversity they're dealing with right now. They have averaged in the three postseason games 48 points per game. And now here's Hill keeping it. And he gets only about two yards on the play. Now downstairs to Lewis Johnson. Hey, guys, down here on the sideline, Peterson was just sick. You know, coaches and players were trying to come over and get him to refocus and encourage him. And offensive guard Mark Williams, the bus, as everyone knows him as, the man who Peterson follows up in those gaps. It's been a long time talking with him, trying to get him to calm down and play his type of football. Adrian Peterson, a redshirt freshman. His brother, Michael, is the outside linebacker at Florida. And here's Hill's first pass. Long over the middle, and it is great caught at the 40-yard line by Corey Joyner. Yesterday, head coach Paul Johnson was saying, we don't pass often, but when we do pass, we pass for a purpose and generally for a big play. And it was a big one, 31 yards. Well, obvious, obviously a team that runs the option is going to get a number of play action fakes that are effective. White shirts come up and Hill has plenty of time, but the catch is the thing. Take a look at Joyner, goes up in the air, takes the collision and able to come up with it. And now Georgia Southern in the hurry up. And there's movement on the line. UMass says it was created by the Eagles. The referee today is John Keyes. It's an official group from the Big Sky Conference. Well, Aaron Parker was begging. He thought that the left guard had moved, but it's not going to go his way. On the spot, replay first down. Take a look at the left guard. If he moves around, he really didn't. Parker, Parker, it was just his imagination, and as a result, it's five yards against Massachusetts. On first down and five. At the 36-yard line. Georgia Southern coming right back. Hill's going to keep it, and he'll pick up a pass. He fumbled. And he he fumbled, fumbled the ball. Did UMass pick it up? Yes, yes they, they did! did. And now Paul Johnson, the head coach, he's beginning to get unglued. Well, I think the beef that he had is he thought that Hill was down, and that's what he screamed to the official about. He thought that Hill was down. Take a look and decide for yourself. Here he cuts up field. Samuel drops, drops, there's the ball, it's out, or his leg's down. Didn't appear to be from that angle. Appeared to be a pretty good call. That is the fourth fumble of the game already. That appears to be a pretty good call. No, it was. He wasn't down. So it is first and 10 for UMass. Three turnovers, 21 points, and here's Bankhead to throw. 
sideline, and it's complete to Jimmy Moore, the transfer from SMU, and he picks up about four on the play. Well, one thing that Georgia Southern can say is that this is the one that the coaches always use, and that is we're only stopping ourselves. Well, yes, you are. Four fumbles and one touchdown is indicative of the fact that Georgia Southern giveth and taketh away. I mean, that's just, it's, it's not good for the blue and white sideline. And still plenty of time to go here in the first quarter. Marcel Ship, no correction, that's Kevin Quinlan. And Quinlan across the 50 to about the 47 yard line. Quin, uh, Quinlan, the freshman, a backup to Marcel Ship, picks up 16. And they don't lose much when they go to Quinlan against McNeese State when Ship was injured. Quinlan stepped in, had a big game, 28 carries for 147 yards. He is their kickoff returner, a very able runner. Quinlan from Somerville, Massachusetts. And so it's first and 10. Quinlan again to the 40-yard line. He's about two yards shy of the first down. Josh Smithers, the middle linebacker, the leading tackler for the University of Georgia Southern. Ed Zulo getting up slowly. Paul Johnson's charges have to be have to be aware of not being depressed here, particularly on defense. It's beyond their control what's happening. But they've got to make a stop. At the 40. They're going to give it to Matt Jordan, and Jordan maybe loses two on the play. Met behind the line of scrimmage by Eric Davis, but that's not the least bit unusual. As Davis, coming into the game, had 24 tackles behind the line of scrimmage this season. Yeah, Davis is a player, and we asked the question as to whether or not he could play at the next level, and they said that he was kind of a tweener at 6'3", 260, whether he could play stand-up or maybe inside backer, but you know what? I've seen too many people that defy the odds. If you can play, then you know, you'll get an opportunity. Third down, long five, bank hit, throwing a screen for Jordan. He's got the first down inside the 35-yard line, brought down by Andre Rogers, a strong safety. Once again, the screen, screen pass is effective. They did it with Ship earlier in the quarter for big yardage. This time, they're just trying to get the first down, and Jordan at 5'11", 210, gets the job done. It's, it's a amazing. lonely time for An Andre Peterson, the, uh, or Adrian Peterson, the running back for Georgia Southern. Couple of turnovers, and his team is already down by 14, and UMass is on the march again. And here's Matt Jordan. Jordan burrows his way to about the 27-yard line, a pickup of nearly seven on the play. And now Massachusetts is doing something many people really didn't anticipate, and that is dominating at the line of scrimmage. The no huddle is, is certainly creating problems for Georgia Southern. They act as if they haven't seen it before. Total yard so far. 292 yards between these two clubs, 21-7. The turnovers have been killing Georgia Southern. The pass is complete to Jimmy Moore, knocked out of bounds inside the 15 for another first down, a pickup of 14 yards on the play. Jimmy Moore, the transfer from Auburn, came in, and I thought it was interesting that Mark Whipple conceded the fact that, you know what, we really didn't teach him anything. He knew how to run routes. He knew what he was doing. Goes to the corner route. Nice move there. Gets out of bounds at the 14. Excuse me, not Auburn. It was SMU. I apologize. 1A school did a great job down there, but decided that he wanted to get more balls, and he certainly has had that this year. Broke a record in his first and only year at UMass. 86 catches. And Chick inside the 10-yard line. Actually, it's Kevin Quinlan on the carry. And time is running out on the first quarter. And for Georgia Southern and head coach Paul Johnson, this first quarter can't end fast enough. Too many people on that sideline second-guessing themselves. Four turnovers on the other side of the field. Mark Whipple, his team leading by two touchdowns. Bankhead pitching it from the shotgun. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage by Benji Harris, 44. 
Well, they had Kerry Taylor, the tight end in the flat, and had him open. And so with seven seconds left in the first quarter, take a look at Kerry Taylor, tight end, senior, captain. Third down from the 10-yard line. They need to get to about the four for the first down. There's a timeout on the field called by UMass. And here comes UMass looking to put more points on the board. Quinlan is the back in the backfield with Bankhead. And Bankhead throwing sideline. And he completes it to Jimmy Moore to the six-yard line. But he's about two yards shy of the first down. Here comes a field goal try for Jason Cherry. And he's got it from 22 yards. And to begin the second quarter, UMass expands its lead to 24 to 7. Cherry is by no means an automatic in his field goal kicking. His longest of the season is just 33 yards. And he's four out of seven coming into the game and now five out of eight. The place kicking is a very iffy proposition for UMass, but now he's got some confidence and UMass has a 17 point lead. When we visited with Mark Whipple yesterday, we talked about his range and he said that his range is about 37 yards. So he said once inside from about the 35 to the 20, he said, that's four down territory. Everything four down territory. Let's go, speaking of down, let's go downstairs to Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Hey, Charlie, you think this game is emotional? Take a look at Georgia Southern defensive line. John Pate's nose. He got, the guy got so upset here on the sideline with his defensive line, he got to banging helmets with his players. The guys he forgot he doesn't have on a helmet. Drew blood, and I think that's something that's motivating his guys down here. And he was livid. You know, he's still bloody, guys. Hey, you know, those, he hasn't wiped his nose. He's just letting it drip. He's a tough guy. That's a, actually, you know what, Charlie? Right there at the bridge of the nose is where you do see cuts all the time as a result of the helmet. So he's right in style. And here's Cunningham from the three yard line. Spinning his way across the 20 to about the 25 yard line where Georgia Southern will take over. First to 10, their first series of the second quarter. Now the question here, you say to yourself, well, we might as well be conservative. Let's hand off to our fullback a couple of times. Oh, wait a minute, we can't do that. He's fumbled twice. All right, let's go to the option. Wait a minute, our quarterback's fumbled twice. You know, this is a difficult time now for Georgia Southern in terms of the fact that you have to reestablish themselves. But hey, they're down 17 points. They got to let it hang out. But again, this is a team that has averaged 38 points per game in the two seasons under Paul Johnson. On the pitch, here's Peterson down the sideline. And you got a glimpse now of what Adrian Peterson is all about. Knocked out of bounds by Kari Samuel, a pickup of 19 on the play. Well, the storyline of the game, Charlie, thus far has certainly been the turnovers. The handoff that Peterson did not get. This very strange pitch that only goes about a yard and a half and bounces up to IE for the touchdown. And of course, a great play by Kari Sammy, who strips Peterson of the ball. And just before he goes down, and of course, later he'll get stripped of the football. So there were a number of turnovers there in the first quarter, and really, that has been the difference. Peterson gains maybe three on the play, met by Aaron Parker and Paul Bolden, the interior of the line. In the first quarter, statistically, UMass had the ball, well, 10 wow. of the 15 minutes. Four turnovers that resulted in 17 points. On second and eight. Hill, the ball is loose again. UMass has it again! I and for the third time today, Coley IE has picked it up. Charlie, I think that time IE got a piece of the pitch. It appeared that he got a piece of the pitch, and that's why the ball went the other direction. UMass is pulling all the right strings, and Don Brown, the defensive coordinator for Massachusetts, is looking brilliant. Take a look at the right of you. 
Take a look rather to the left of your screen, the pitch. Take a look and see if IE gets his hand in there. Right there he does. That's great anticipation. Did you say, uh, you know what, if, if we had a player of the game up to this point, Charlie, I'd have to pick number 50. That is the fifth turnover by Georgia Southern. And we have 13 minutes and 59 seconds to go in the first half. Five turnovers. Thank you. Still has it. Rolling, throwing, incomplete. Went with a fake reverse to Zulo, hoping to catch Georgia Southern napping, but to their credit, they had the two receivers downfield covered, and quarterback has to throw it away. It is amazing to think that this UMass team had a record of two and nine last year. But when Mark Whipple came in, the first thing he did was go out and get himself a quarterback, and that was Scott Bankhead, junior college transfer from Escondido, California. And Jimmy Moore, the wide receiver, the senior from SMU, who promptly became their all-time leading receiver for a single season. And then Marcel Ship, the outstanding running back, getting to play every single day. Averaging 177 yards per game. Ship on that play picks up just a couple, so it's third down and eight. But Charlie, not to beat a dead horse, but we had pointed out this is four down territory at this part of the field, so the third down play might not necessarily be a throw down field to get the first. And it isn't. Ship hit hard. And, he and, fumbled. And there's a fumble. And it's picked up by Georgia Southern. And here's Kowaki Thomas. We said at the top of the broadcast that we were not likely to see very much defense today. And we were likely to see a lot of points. After all, these two teams averaged between them 77 points per game. Well, it's 24 to 7. We've got six turnovers. 37 yard return for Kowaki Thomas. Take a look at the end of the play. Ship battling for extra yardage right there. It goes just a little bit too far. He tried to change hands. And right on top of it, give Thomas credit, because a lot of times when the ball is just laying there, you assume the play is dead. Instead, Thomas pulls it out and starts to run. And the officials, whether they could have sat down or not, have no choice but to say, hey, it's a fumble. Big turnover for Georgia Southern. And now Massachusetts calls timeout. First and 10. Georgia Southern flag on the play. Peterson gets maybe a couple of yards. Has there been a faster serve than Roscoe Tanner's? Oh, in his day, he was the fastest, but yeah. oh, sure. Well, I'm just saying even now. Yeah, Sampras. He Sampras would be one. Kryacek's got the big serve. Even Isovich has the big serve. Filipusis. Rosetsky. Wow. No flag. They're going to pick it up. You know, one of the things the officials can get confused by the way Georgia Southern lines up, whether or not the guy's on the line or off, and you can see Mark Whipple wasn't very happy about it. He thought that it should have been a motion penalty, too. Wow, that's... Ooh. Five out of six possessions have resulted in turnovers for Georgia Southern. On second down. Nine. Here's Hill. He's going to run it. And he's going to get himself a first down inside the 25-yard line to about 23. Notice, Charlie, one of the things that Georgia Southern is doing is that they have been altering their formations, going with some different situations. That time they have three wide receivers. Quarterback drawn, why not? When your second-best runner is the quarterback, he cuts in the middle of the field, gets the first down. 5'11", 165-pounder. That'll be a tough kid to play to play quarterback in an option offense because he do get hit a lot. Especially he's just 163 pounds. Hill is running seven times for 92 yards already today. He keeps it first down inside the 10 and down at the five yard line. So already the quarterback, Hill, is over 100 yards in the ball game. Charlie, one of the things that we talked about is the fact that you can you can simulate as best you can another team's, another team's tendencies or their particular formation, but you cannot simulate the individuals. And in this case, Hill, as we pointed out earlier, with the 4-4-40 in the decision-making process, he's a difficult guy to catch. Already over 100 yards, I think, isn't he? Eight carries, 111. First and goal at the five-yard line. 
Right up the middle, Peterson down to about the three. Charlie, it's clear to me that Massachusetts has just decided coming into this game that anything off tackle or between the tackles just isn't going to happen. They have really, they have really mounted up against Peterson. I would say that in these next three plays, if indeed it takes him that much, or an option here, the Hill can probably get in the end zone fairly easily. Not much of a game. Second and goal. Hill, the pitch to Peterson. And he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Coley Ie. Well, Ie comes up big. What they tried to do there is they went with a four wide receiver set trying to spread some people out. But what that does is they're going to have the blockers downfield. Nobody gets a piece of Ie. And in fairness, and in fairness to Peterson, Hill pitched a little bit too early. He did not make anybody commit. Defensive coordinator Don Brown, who was with Mark Whipple at Brown. And he, for the most part, likes what he sees out of his defensive unit. Four wides again, Charlie. And here's Hill looking to throw into the end zone. Touchdown to Corey Joyner. Last week against Western Illinois, the number one defense in one double A. Greg Hill responded with four touchdown passes. He'd never thrown more than two in a game until last week. And here's his first of the game. 24-13, and now the extra point try for Chris Chambers. Well, Charlie, if there's such a such a thing as a go-to guy receiver in an option offense, Joyner would certainly be the guy over 21 yards per catch for Joyner. That is his 35th catch of the season. And it's 24 to 14. So Georgia State, which has averaged 48 points per game in the postseason. Kevin Quinlan and Adrian Zulo. Standing back at their own five yard line. High, Ooh. very short. There's Healy. There's Healy, the ever present special teamer, and he's out across the 35 yard line. <laughs> first and 10 from the 35, quick toss. That's, hey, that's a Charlie, that's backwards. Uh, that was oh. a lateral, and oh boy. <laughs> and that's out at the 30 yard line. That was big trouble. I knew you'd appreciate that. 68 Jets versus, versus Raiders. Charlie Ooh. Smith. If you're right about that. Take a look right here. There's his feet. Where does the ball end up? Clearly, well, from that angle, it's a little bit difficult, but obviously the officials saw it out at the 30, now second and about 16. And we're standing pretty much right over where that play was made. It was clear to be a, a pass behind him. Here's Chip. And Chip gets back to the original line of scrimmage and then maybe a yard or two. It'll be third and eight on the tackle by Josh Smithers. Von Allen had him in the backfield, but the ship's credit, he's able to break that tackle and have him set up with a, at least a possible, possibly makeable third and nine. Turnovers have been UMass's best friend in this game. Look at the field advantage that they have had. Here's Bankhead's toss on the run. zulum has got it, but short of the first down. But Charlie, that's the disadvantage right there of being 138. Normally, if you're a 180 or 190 pound wide receiver, your inertia will carry you forward. But watch what happens when he makes the catch and gets hit. See, he's within about a yard and a half of the first down if he can turn up field, but instead, pow, he flies out of bounds and is nowhere near it. So Massachusetts ostensibly, and I do say that ostensibly, will have to punt. Zulo looked like a pinball after being hit by a flipper. He just went. In the other direction. And so on fourth down, it is a fake, and it is a first down. Charlie, you knew that was coming close to midfield. Massachusetts needed to keep the momentum, and they did it. Matt Jordan, who is the up back on the play, gets it to the 50 yard line and the first down. One of the difficulties is, is you've got to pay attention to personnel. Is Matt Jordan normally the fullback? There's the snap. Punter does a great, oh, well, not a great job with the fake. But cutting up field, getting the first down. I'm surprised more teams don't do it there, simply because of the fact that the gaps on defense are so wide for punt return. Great job by Kari Samuel, the All-American middle linebacker who was able to get two people and enable Jordan to get the first. First and 10 at the midfield strike. Todd Bankhead is the quarterback from the shotgun. Throwing down the sideline. Zulo, it's incomplete. 
Two on two. Kawaki Thomas and Adrian Zulo. Good coverage, and again, not to not to overrate the fact, but when you are a little when you're slight and a little bit smaller, you can get bodied up. And that's what Thomas does. He keeps shoving him out of the way, but still, terrific throw by Bankhead. And Charlie, I'd have to say that was a catchable ball. Todd Bankhead, 11 of 17, 88 yards here in the first half. Pitch out, and here's Ship. He's got himself the first down, still on his feet, and brought down at the 36-yard line. Benji Harris with the tackle, not before Ship picks up 14 more. Great runners have the ability to cut back against the grain, and that's exactly what Ship did. There's an injured player on the field. 11 carries, 88 yards for Ship. And there is a uh, UMass Minuteman down Zulo. at the 40. Zulo, it is Charlie. Zulo, yeah. Zulo had a banged up knee coming into the game, and he was limping earlier. And just like a scene out of Heaven Can Wait, he's back up. <laughs> so that so that. That makes him who? Tom Jarrett? <laughs> Very <laughs> good, yes. Look at the move by Ship. There's the cutback by Ship. There at the end of the play. Ouch, you could see right there the knee in the back. That's what caused him to lose his win, but he's just a hit back. He's bank hit tossing, and he completes it to the 30-yard line to the tight end, Captain Kerry Taylor. It's about three yards short of the first down, second down and seven yards to go. Shows the toughness of Taylor that he actually gets hit from the blind side right in the midsection, and it's the other guy that goes backwards. Taylor, 6'2", 248 pounds. He and Kari Samuel, the linebacker, two seniors, were immediately pointed captain by Mark Whipple upon his arrival. Flags fly at the line of scrimmage. No play. Right tackle move, Charlie. Mim Hill. Did a little bit of a flex, and that's the official saw. Let's go downstairs now to Lewis Johnson. What's going on, Lewis? Hey, guys, let me catch up on a couple of injury notes here. First quarter, we saw UMass left tackle Cliff Bolden go out with a Start shoulder problem. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still suck it down. All right, I'm letting the referee give us that information. He's got ice on that. He may not come back because it's bruised. And Zulu, of course, taking no med medical attention, the tough guy, just a drink of water. That's it. That's a football player. Second down, nine yards to go. Thank you. Throw incomplete. Oh, that was a catchable ball to the tight end, Kerry Taylor. When Mark Whipple, when Mark Whipple said we're going to try and get Taylor the ball, he wasn't kidding. That's about the seventh or eighth time they've thrown, and as you pointed out, very catchable ball. Body just couldn't get down and make the snag. So on third down and nine, Bankhead from the shotgun. Ship in the backfield with him. Steve Lay is flanked way out to the top. On third and nine, screen play. Ship's got some room down the sideline, and he's brought down to the 20-yard line and a first down. A pickup of 14 on the play. Cornerback Kawaki Thomas made the tackle. Charlie, you'd think that Georgia Southern would have picked this up by now. Twice now on screen plays, they've been effective on third down. Once on third down and another on a first. But here it is again when they've got to have the yardage, they go with the screen, and Georgia Southern is not able to deal with it. Bankhead does a great job faking, gets out to the left, and look at the grass that Ship has. He isn't touched until he's 10 yards downfield. Done a nice job. Marcel Ship, the sophomore from Patterson, New Jersey. On first down at the 21. He's bank hit. Throwing over the middle. And it's caught by Moore. And on second effort, did he get in? Yes! Touchdown, UMass! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They'll mark it inside the one. The line judge at the far end of the end zone had raised his hands for the touchdown. And now there is consultation inside the one. First and goal at the one. The side judge, in fact. Mike Nelson had called the touchdown. He was waved off on the sneak on second effort. That's now the touchdown for UMass. And they lead it 30 to 14. Charlie, at the snap of the ball, Andre Rogers, the cornerback, 
back pedals to about 15 yards, and that enables Thomas to get underneath. You can see he ends up making the tackle, and maybe that should have been a touchdown, but still the point is, take a look. Take a look, there's nobody in the area, and that's a nice touch by Bankhead between three defenders. And so now the extra point drive for Jason Cherry. Moore is showing why he's so clutch. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. 31-17. UMass will kick off from the 50-yard line because of this penalty. Take a look. Benji Harris is going to sucker punch Taylor. Right at the end of the play, you see he gets the punch in. And he doubles over in pain. The official saw it through the flag. Big advantage for Massachusetts. Now, every time I see this, I'm... I'm always curious about why they try and kick it out of the end zone. Here's a great opportunity to kick a pop-up inside the 10. Absolutely. You know, but that never seems to happen. And after all of that, Georgia Southern decides to take a timeout and reconsider its lot in life with seven minutes and 17 seconds left in the first half. Here's another great opportunity for Massachusetts. Look at how Georgia Southern is. They're set up for an onside kick. I mean, if this kicker can put it in the corner, Macklay can put it in the corner someplace. It's a kick on the line drive back at the five yard line and brought down at about the 11 yard line. Andre Rogers, the cornerback, with the kick return, and it wasn't much of a return at all. So that penalty really hurts Georgia Southern. Rogers would have been better off just to let the thing go and run through the end zone. But you get excited sometimes, you want to get your hands on the ball. And you get a sense now that Georgia Southern. Trailing by 17 and all those turnovers beginning now to become unglued a bit. That silly penalty on the point after the, the low blow punch in the belly. And now here's Peterson. And Peterson gets to about the 15. A pickup of two or three on the play. Aaron Parker, the defensive tackle, makes the play. Well, Charlie, this is not a team that's used to having to come from behind. And Needless to say, that's not an offense that's designed to come from behind. Hardly a two-minute offense, but again, still plenty of time. If they can get in the end zone and get a stop, they're right back in the game. Diedrich Parham is flanked way out to the left side. Man coverage with Mike Smith. You see him at the top of your screen. Let's see if he's going to throw it. No, he's going to run it himself and get nothing at all. Well, they really have been able to contain it. In the interior of the line, the UMass defense. Now let's go downstairs to Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Hey, Charlie, you know Adrian Peterson really struggling today, but you know for this guy, it's been a season of shattering lots of records, 34 so far, and the highlight has to be these three. You know, he broke the state of Georgia's freshman rushing record held by Herschel Walker, Ron Dane's national rushing record, and then the freshman record for touchdowns set by Randy Moss in a season that Marshall played in this same championship game. But, you know, the coaches are expecting better out of him today if, they, if, if he plans to keep up with that kind of success. Well, here's Ellis throwing on the run. It's intercepted. Gerard White down at the 25-yard line. The sixth turnover of the first half by Georgia Southern. Everything that could possibly go wrong for Georgia Southern certainly has. Take a look at the rollout. Kari Samuel, the All-American, gets just a piece of it. White, as you pointed out, does a great job coming off his man to make a pick. Setting him up at the 26-yard line. Another costly turnover for the Eagles. Six Georgia, eight Georgia South possessions. Six of them have been turnovers. The other two touchdowns can only hang on to the football. Reverse. Zulo's got some room. Flag on the play. There's a touchdown, but will it come back? Charlie, it appeared to be a great block at the point of attack by Haygood, the center, or rather Laubach, the guard. But what ends up happening is that he holds on a little bit too much, and the result is holding, and it's going to come back. Well, you saw the blinding speed of little Adrian Zulo. Last year, the National High School 100-meter champion running a 10-4-300. But 138 pounds, and when he saw the hole, he exploded through it. But the holding penalty brings it back. Should point out that we've been saying 138. The 160 that you see listed there is very generous. Coach Whipple himself is the one that told us that. 
but he was 158. 138, rather. It's all right. I haven't seen 160 since eighth grade either. <laughs> uh, first down. Now and six yards to go. Here's Ship, and he gets maybe four of those six. Years ago when I played Charlie, they used to have these signs up. Little number 21, who you remember Cliff Branch, and the line that said was speed kills. Well, even 138 pounds, if you can pick him up and lay him down like that, that that's tough for a defense when you've got a guy that can run like that. It's second down, and about a long three. They have to get to about the 16 for the first down, and here's Marcel Schiff. He's at the 16, he's at the 12-yard line, another first down. A pickup of seven on the play. Ship with a nice 360 cuts back against the grain and gets the first down. I think one of the one of the unsung people here, and, and inevitably they are unsung, is the offensive linemen who are doing the job for Massachusetts. Bolden back in the game despite his shoulder injury, doing a good job. Win, Haygood, Laubach, and Hill are really pushing people off. And Ship's got to be pushing about 102, isn't he, Charlie? Doesn't carry his 91 yards. On first down and 10 at the 11. Here is Ship again, and inside the five and down at the three. Josh Smithers gets him by the scruff of the neck and throws him down. We've been talking about Matt Jordan's ability to catch the ball, but he has done an outstanding job leading Ship as well. Smithers, 33, is the leading tackler on Georgia Southern. And now quickly to the line of scrimmage. The awkward eye here is Chip right up the gut. Touchdown, Massachusetts! 37 14. When you go into the end zone that easily, Charlie, that's dominance by the offensive line. You saw him laying on the back of the legs of Bolden. That means some blue shirts got pushed off the line, and they certainly did. Already here in the first half. UMass has scored more points against Georgia Southern than any team has all year in an entire game. And now the extra point drive for Jason Cherry. 38 to 14. The most points Georgia Southern had given up in a game until this point in a game was 34. Now they've given up 38. More than 10,000 fans from Georgia Southern made their way up to Tennessee. 500 from UMass. There they are, and they're the ones at the moment who are making <laughs> all the noise. There are as many people in the UMass band that are here than fans who made the trip down. And now their team is leading big. And Cunningham with the return, not quite to the 30-yard line. There's some happy folks from Amherst. They're gonna call a penalty at the end of the play, Teron Hunter. Decided to take a cheap, cheap shot, number 20 for Massachusetts, and that's going to give Georgia Southern another 15 yards. Well, don't squander. That big lead with silly penalties is what they're thinking on the UMass sideline. So they'll tack on 15 yards for the personal foul. Watch at the end of the play to the, will probably be to the right of your screen. Everybody's standing still. But you can't quite see it. Hunter comes in and just and just creams the guy. Look at that. They're going to pitting him in the leg. Ooh, insult to injury. And so it's first and ten for Georgia Southern. At their own 45-yard line. They haven't trailed by this much in a game all year. They haven't given up this many points in an entire game all year. And it's 38 points they've surrendered with 3.59 to go in the first half. Give it right up the gut to Peterson. And Peterson gains four on the play. One of the things that we discussed with Coach Paul Johnson was his ability to say have a two-minute situation. Could they come back or could they score quickly? And he reassured us that they could. But of course here, Charlie, you know, it's like they'd have to. They gotta do it. They gotta do it more than once. They've got to get on the board in a hurry. They can't go into this. Intermission trailing by 24. Oh, that was a nice spin move by Benny Cunningham. And 
Cunningham into UMass territory at about the 47 yard line. Coley Ai and Kari Samuel, the linebackers, combined to make the tackle. It'll be second down, about two yards to go. Charlie, the run support has been outstanding for UMass. You've got to give defensive coordinator Don Brown a lot of credit. Nobody else has been able to figure out this Georgia Southern offense. And while certainly they've still put up some yards, UMass has certainly held them in check. Third down now, and two. Breaks a tackle, first down, then some, and brought down at the 31-yard line by Coley Ai, and that saved a touchdown, but 16 more yards in the hip pocket of Adrian Peterson. I think that's his longest run of the day, Charlie. Grant Chestnut, the offensive tackle, really wishes that he would have turned around and found Ai because Peterson is in the secondary. Get a chance to see it right up the middle. Peterson is in the secondary, ready to go. You can see. Right there, he's standing there. Come on, who should I block? He turns around and goes, oh, too late. Uh, he makes the play from the backside. On first down, Hill's going to throw. Long toward the end zone. He overthrows his intended receiver, Diedrich Parra. I mean, he overthrew by 15 yards. Charlie, you and I have been afforded the opportunity to see some great quarterbacks this year and some passing offenses. When you concentrate almost solely on the running attack, it's very difficult to give ample measure to the other side of the ball. And that was discombobulated from the start. Parham is actually looking back for the quarterback before he's even downfield. Paul Johnson in his second season at Georgia Southern was an offensive coordinator at Navy and at Hawaii before that where they employed the, the options with varying degrees of success. Here's Peterson. He's got some room down the sideline. Still on his feet. And he is that's a touchdown. In touchdown! What a great block, Charlie, at the point of attack by Gerard Freeman. He's the one that was able to free Peterson for the touchdown. The side judge fell on the seat of his pants, attempting to make the call. Take a look at the lead block by number 19. Gets the man down. Boy, that is a great block. And Peterson does the rest in the open field. Gets a nice block downfield by Parham. Great balance, five foot ten, two hundred and seven, almost ideal, Charlie. Almost ideal dimensions, but instead they didn't give him the touchdown. No, they didn't. He's that much short of the touchdown. Whole house backfield. Now he's got the touchdown. Adrian Peterson, his 34th touchdown of the season. That's a surreal number. It is. Charlie, I think the reason that he wasn't given the touchdown initially is because the guy was supposed to call, as you pointed out, was on the was on his butt. Well, he's got the touchdown. It's a Georgia Southern. Back to within 18. Up to this point, 26 rushes and four passes for Georgia Southern. I, I dare to say, Charlie, in the second half, that ratio is going to have to change. And so the extra point drive. Chris. Chamber was 38 to 21 with a minute and 57 seconds left in the first half. Complete with a additional grass stain, Mike Nelson. And so now let's see what UMass can do in the final minute and 57 seconds of the first half. Kevin Quinlan down the sideline and he makes it as far as the 31 yard line. Now, we've talked about how wide open Mark Whipple is, but, you know, Charlie, there's no way that he thought with a minute 51 remaining in the half that he'd be up 17. Think it'd be conservative here? Nope. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> That's just not in his demeanor. One of the things he wanted to do when he get, got to UMass last year was to spread out his offense, and he brought in pretty good-looking quarterback Todd Bankhead from outside San Diego, Palomar Junior College. And he's got a good looking running back in Marcel Ship. And he brought in a transfer student, Jimmy Moore, the wide receiver. Well, offense is spread out, as you see, and out of the backfield. Here is Ship across the 35 to the 36 yard line. On second down and seven. Right up the middle, across the 45. The Ship is finally brought into port at the 49 yard line. Another first down, a pickup of 14 on the play. 
Adrian Peterson was supposed to be the stone star of this game, but Ship maybe didn't get the publicity that he deserved after all coming into this game. He had 2,298 yards, well over 100 yards now, and Charlie, he's very impressive. Second team All-America. Second only to Adrian Peterson. 16 carries, 123 yards. Here's Bankhead's toss, incomplete, intended for Jimmy Moore. A fine defensive play by Earthwind Moreland. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting all day to say that name, haven't you? Earthwind Moreland. Well, we, we, we had to find out where the name Earthwind came from. <laughs> yeah, his mom was a big fan of Earthwind and Fire. <laughs> we are happy to report Earthwind's mom was not a big fan yeah, of Megadeth. Megadeth. <laughs> It is second down and 10 yards to go. You know, those are things you just don't make up. Earthwind Moreland. Right up the gut. That's Matt Jordan. Jordan inside the 35 and wrestled down at the 31 yard line by Archie Thompson. The freshman free safety, a pickup of 21 on the play. Well, Charlie, Georgia Southern drives the length of the field, gets the touchdown, and you said they just had to do that. Well, now in the last 158, you say to yourself, hey, let's see if we can hold them. That's not what Georgia Southern is doing. Give, give Mark Whipple credit. He's going for the kill. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. Jordan the single back. Bankhead throwing, and he completes it to the tight end, Taylor. He's run out of bounds. At about the 25 yard line, it'll be second down. Oh, about four yards to go. So, Kerry Taylor, the senior captain from Mansfield, Massachusetts, having a decent first half indeed, as is quarterback Todd Bankhead. And look for Massachusetts to continue to use the sidelines, Charlie, because they only have one timeout remaining. Second down and four yards to go. They have to get just inside the 22. Bankhead throwing over the middle. And it's caught by Moore. He's still on his feet. He fumbled Bumble. the ball. And Georgia Southern gets the turnover. Kawaki Thomas, Charlie, is the guy I think that was able to come up with it. Moore trying to do just a little bit too much. If he could have kept his balance, he goes into the end zone. and said he stumbles, loses the ball, and Thomas comes up with it. Second fumble recovery for Thomas. Great catch. Now as he's stumbling, that's a great job. You got to give some credit there to Rodgers who strips some of the ball and Thomas is Johnny on the spot. Now how big a play is this? You have UMass seemingly on its way into the end zone for perhaps 44 or 45 first half points. Now instead Georgia Southern has 38 seconds to go in the half and if they can come back and get back into this game and go into the locker room trailing just by 10. Here's a toss over the middle. There's Corey Joyner at the 32 yard line and a first down. A pickup of 22 on the play. I got to tell you, Charlie, I'm really surprised at that. I thought Georgia Southern would have been content to run out the clock, but it really shows the confidence that Johnson has in Hill, who obviously isn't that big of a thrower. It's only his fifth throw of the day. On first down and 10 at the 32. Two timeouts left for Georgia Southern. Here's Hill rolling, throwing, incomplete. Well underthrown and safely out of bounds, second and ten. Great opportunity right here, Charlie, for a quarterback draw. What UMass is doing is they're back in somewhat of a prevent, six, seven people back in the rushing, rushing only four. He could easily get downfield for about 20 yards, call timeout, and possibly get in position if he plays later for a field goal. Second down and ten at the 32. Defensive coordinator Don Brown, who came over from Brown University, along with Mark Ripple, in their first year at Amherst, on second and ten. Still the throw again, a lot of time, over the middle, incomplete. Damon Brown was wide open, and he was looking before he was catching. Well, that's a shame for Georgia Southern, because he also had some room to roam. The deep in route. Hill puts it right on the money. Oh boy, did he ever take his eye off the ball, huh? Yep. It is third down with 14 seconds left in the half. Still like a drop play, Charlie. Still like it. Well, again, you get the first down, the clock stops. They have two timeouts left. Their field goal kicker. His longest is 45 yards. Here's Hill throwing over the middle. Corey Joyner can't hang on. Eight seconds left. 
Charlie, what they did there is they came up in a formation that appeared to be Hail Mary with three people all bunched together. Instead, Joyner was able to break out and come across on the end. But once again, if you're Hill, you got to be frustrated. You're making some pretty good throws. People just not coming up with the ball. Two catchable balls, and so on fourth down. They will punt it away. Interesting question here, Charlie, is with eight seconds remaining, maybe maybe you might be better off to run a sweep just to run the thing out instead of risking a punt block. Kenny Warb to punt it. He gets it away. And there is going to be nobody in a white uniform near the ball. And we have come to the end of the first half. And UMass to kick it off here in the second half. Georgia Southern won the toss in the third, so now they're trailing by 17. They get the ball to begin the second half, and this is Benny Cunningham. And Cunningham is tripped up at the 22-yard line. Now let's go downstairs to Lewis Johnson, find out, what, find out what he found out at halftime. Well, guys, I talked to Paul Johnson, and I asked him if there was a problem with overconfidence in his team, and he said, no, the problem is self-destruction and those six turnovers. He said they've been down 17 points in the game and, and have made it back. That's what he's expecting. Now, Mark Whipple on the other side of the field, he said they missed linebacker Coley IE last week out with an injury, but boy, are they feeling his dominance today. And he also said that they will have to play their best football all year in this last half to win the championship. All right, here comes the first play of the second half. Thank you, Lewis. Peterson with the carry. But when you look at things statistically, Charlie, obviously the thing that stands out there, of course, are those six turnovers. But something else that you wouldn't have taken into account is that UMass, in time of possession, more than five minutes ahead of the ground game of Georgia Southern. Six of those turnovers in ten possessions in the first half. And yet, Georgia Southern, which has averaged 48 points per game in their three playoff games to this point, still very much in it. Although trailing by 17, here's Hill. Will pitch to Peterson, and Peterson still on his feet. Peterson finally brought down at the 40-yard line, and that's a first down after a pickup of 17 by Adrian Peterson. The mark, the mark of a great back, Charlie, is the ability to take a collision like that and not go down. Wow. Adrian Peterson, red shirt freshman, who told you his brother is the outside linebacker at Florida, Mike Peterson. And Peterson again, this time gains about three on the play. Peterson coming into the game, averaged 7.3 yards per carry, 175 yards per game. Well, he traded all those yards and touchdowns now for those two fumbles that he gave up, Charlie. Early in the game, if you're just joining us, we had some fairly significant showers up until about an hour before game time. And so the field was slick. It's in much better condition now. Hill still has the ball, and he's brought down at about the 46-yard line by Dan Schneider, the defensive end. Great job from the backside by Schneider because it appeared that he had some grass ahead of him. Schneider gets up a little bit slowly, and once again, reinforcing the point the defensive coordinator Don Brown made about his defensive ends playing well. Schneider's having a great game. Schneider also coming out now. Looks like his left shoulder is giving him some trouble. As you take a look at Don Brown, the defensive coordinator for UMass. We're talking with uh, Brown and, and his boss Mark Whipple yesterday. Vision, I asked him, oh, 40-35 kind of game? Yeah, but not at the half. On third down, Hill still got the ball. He's got the first down and finally wrestled out of bounds at about the 40-yard line of Georgia Southern. That's a, of the uh, University of Massachusetts. That's a first down. Pick up a 13. Here's Lewis Johnson downstairs. Hey, guys, something to chew on upstairs. You know Adrian Peterson started the game with gloves on, coughed up the ball, had that fumble, and then we saw him go back in the game without gloves, and so far he hasn't had them on. I tried to find out if there was something with that, but who knows, maybe it's psychological, but that's something to think about as Peterson continues this game now without gloves on. Loveless Adrian Peterson. That's a very good observation. On first and ten, 
Here's Peterson right up the middle, and he gains another four or five yards. Charlie, I remember last year in the big Ohio State-Michigan game, David Boston, their star wideout, started the game with gloves, mm -hmm. dropped two passes, and suddenly they disappeared. So that's very co uh, that's a very cogent point by Lewis is that whether or not it's real or imagined, the point is that if you think so, you that's get rid all of that counts, yep. yeah. Second down, six yards to go. Peterson, the single back. Hill's going to keep it. Hill's got some room. He slips and falls on that soggy turf at about the 32-yard line. Would have had the first down easily, but cut off the inside leg. He knows right there. You can see a little bit of a smirk on his face. Knew he could have had it. That's the play that they had done on third down with so much effectiveness, which is have everybody going in one direction, run the naked option the other. So it's third down and about two yards to go. How about I go out on a limb and say this is four down territory? Especially trailing by 17. Peterson on second effort, very close to first down territory. He had to hit the line. As they get off the pile. No, nope, short. Short by well under a yard. Fourth down. And of course they're going to go for it here. What do you mean, of course? You're not going to give me my Nostradamus credit? Well, there's no sense in punting. <laughs> you're right. And you're not going to go for a 50 yard field goal trailing by 17. Nostradamus. Peterson. Uh oh, here's Hill. He what breaks a tackle. Oh, what he's still play. on his feet. And finally brought down at the 14 yard line. Hill was tackled, or so it seemed, behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. It looked as if UMass would take over on downs, but on second effort, it was Hill with the first down. If for whatever reason, Charlie, Georgia Southern comes back, and you could see there the knee looked like it could have been down. Sure did. If Georgia Southern comes back and wins this football game, they will point to that particular play. I'm really surprised at that because I would have thought they would have gone up the middle with so, such a short way to go, but that shows how much Paul Johnson trusts in his quarterback. And there's movement on the offensive line. 62, Rich McGrath. Before the snap, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. So the line of scrimmage is the 20. First down and 15. Hill still has the ball. Hill is brought down at the 13 yard line. So it'll be second down about eight on a pickup of nearly seven. Ten minutes to go here in the third quarter. Six turnovers in the first half just killed Georgia Southern. And here's Hill again, this time inside the 10. Lance Overby, the free safety made the tackle. And they will look back on that fourth down play. Well, maybe not. They've got to get in the end zone first, Charlie. And, of course, one thing about this Georgia Southern, yeah, they're, they're going down the field and they're potentially going to score, but they are taking some time off the clock. But, again, this is a team that is used to scoring into the 40s. They've got 21. They're halfway there. It'll be up to their defense in the second half to keep UMass off the board. Here's Peterson inside the five and very close to the first down. Benny Cunningham stands beside his head coach, Paul Johnson, and there's Mark Whipple, the head coach at the University of Massachusetts. You know, you're right, Charlie. It was almost obligatory for them to come out and score. I think the onus now, as you pointed out, is going to be on the Georgia Southern defense, who 
uh, for lack of a better phrase, dropped the ball in the first half, giving up nearly 350 yards. On the measurement of first down. So it's first and goal inside the five yard line. So from the five, Peterson up the gut, touchdown Georgia Southern. That is his 35th touchdown of the season. And we take a look back at what may well turn out to be a key turning point in this game in just a moment. On the fourth down play. Swinging gate, Charlie. Oh, but not for long. All right. The extra point try coming up for Chris Chambers, who is 80 out of 83 on the season. 13 plays, 78 yards, all of them on the ground. And the extra point is no good. Boy, oh boy. 38 27. 13 plays, 78 yards on the scoring drive. Quinlan from the 50. Up the sideline and down at about the 33 yard line. Charlie, if indeed that fourth down play. Take a look at the knee of quarterback Greg Hill. That would appear right there that he is down. But to his credit, he bounces up, cuts back to the outside, breaks some tackles, and of course gets the first down. On the extra point, you pointed out the Chambers have been really good this year, kicking in the 80s. Watch the right of your screen. Awfully close, but the official is right underneath it. He says no good. And so now it is UMass's turn. Oh, the ball is up in the air, and I think Ship was able to bring it down. Charlie, when you have that short pitch like that, the quarterback has to take a little bit off it. Ship has his inertia going forward, and it hits him in the chest and bounces up, and Whipple is very happy that they retain possession. Take a look at the collision. Hits him in the face mask and the shoulder pads. Davis is in there, almost gets it, but Ship, to his credit, says, don't worry about running the ball. Let me just get it. So it is second down and 13, a loss of three on the play. Ship and Jordan in the backfield now behind Bankhead. He's going to toss it. No, he's not. He's going to be down at the 20-yard line. And that was Vaughn Allen with the sack, his ninth of the season. Charlie, in the 25 passes attempted, I, I, I really didn't see anybody close to Bankhead up to this point. Now Allen gets a big sack. I think that coming into this game, the Georgia Southern felt like they, they could just rush four and get away with it. Well, Allen gets a big sack, and it appears the momentum has a chance to shift here. That's the first sack of the game for either club. Third down and 20 yards to go. Even though Georgia Southern is trailing by 11, they've got momentum in their hip pocket. And here is Schiff, and he's brought down at the 29-yard line. And it'll be fourth down. Brian Wilson, the Virginia Beach boy, makes the tackle. From Virginia Beach, Brian Wilson. And as he mentioned, it's going to be incumbent upon the defense of Georgia Southern to get their team back in the game. Standing deep is Corey Joyner. Line drive punt, and that's going to take a bounce. A oh, decision. boy. That's going to take a bounce all the way down to about the one yard line. Hill's going to take it himself. Oh, he's got some room now. Hill across the 15 and down at about the 19 yard line by the strong safety Brian Smith. Charlie mentioned a 69 yard pump with an asterisk. You see, Corey Joyner has to point out to get his cover guy on the outside receiver. As a result, he can't get back in time to make the catch. And the result, of course, as a bounced football, and once again, there's that man Healy making yet another play in special teams for the Minutemen. As you take a look at Corey Joyner, who has done an outstanding job as a receiver. And now here's Hill again. Hill to the 25-yard line. Coley Ayi with the tackle, the linebacker. Crowd's a little bit quiet right now. I guess they're used to this, but if they continue to get these seven yard chunks, Charlie, still plenty of time left in this football game. Hill with 18 carries this afternoon, 185 yards. Between Hill and Peters. 
They've got some running game. Here's Peterson. Peterson across the 30 to about the 34-yard line. I.E. with the tackle again, and UMass is playing on its heels. One of the difficult things for UMass is what are you going to do? Are you going to flank or are you going to come up? Take a look at Williams. Kari Samuel decides to go with the Olay technique. It ends up being costly because Peterson is able to slip through the gap and get the extra yardage. First and 10, just shy of their own 35-yard line. Trailing by 11, plenty of time to go. And here's Hill again, and Hill to the 39-yard line. Greg Hill has a ritual before each game on the team bus over to the ballpark. He always has with him a Snickers and a Coca-Cola. Get that little sugar rush when he was a kid. He was a chocolate freak, and his mother said, no, you got to cut down on it. So as a concession to mom, it's now only a Snickers and a Coke the day of the game. Well, he must, I was going to say, he must have a Bonneville Salt Flats metabolism. He's <laughs> only be 163. That's something. There he gets to the 45-yard line and very close to the first down. I mean, to eat that many sweets and still be as thin as he is? And to run the way he does. 5'11", 163-pound junior out of Sarasota, Florida. And as a starter, he has led the Eagles to a 19-1 and record. You see the play selection there obviously sided uh, to the rush, but when you're as effective with the run as Georgia Southern has been at 14-0, and you can't have a lot of arguments. But that's basically the ratio of uh, run to pass that he's had all year. Sure. About 800 and something. 815 running plays, 160 passing plays coming into today's game. Now here's Hill looking to throw. Throwing over the middle. Wide open is Corey Joyner. And Joyner is brought down at the 33-yard line. The minute men by Lance Overby. And another first down. And you get a sense that the Eagles are beginning to fly. Interesting, interesting that Greg Hill has four completions. How many catches do you think Joyner's got? He's, He's got, got a ball. Yeah, he certainly does. Take a look, the play action, of course, you see people turning and not knowing quite where to be. Caught in a zone, Joyner finds the dead spot. Big yardage for the Eagles. That's a good news for you. He's going to be our primary receiver. Bad news is it's an option offense. <laughs> First and 10, Peterson right up the gut. He gets about nine more yards. So Adrian Peterson, who struggled so mightily in the first half, now beginning to get his feet well within him, and he has uh, done the job. He's rushed for at least 100 yards in every game this year. Adrian Peterson, in fact, has rushed for at least 200 yards in six games. Charlie, we talked about the fact that the onus had fell on the Georgia Southern defense to make a play. If this drive continues the way it appears that it's going to, that is going to shift to the UMass offense. Right up the middle, there's Peterson. He's got himself another first down. This is the 15th consecutive game this season in which Adrian Peterson has rushed for upwards of 100 yards. Got 140 something now. And there's a UMass Minuteman who is down and injured. And it appears to be Paul Bolden, 99. Let's give Adrian Peterson a lot of credit here, Charlie. It could have been easy for him after those two fumbles to feel sorry for himself. We saw that picture of him on the bench as if he was some sort of leper with nobody around him. Now suddenly here late in the second quarter and here in the second half, he has asserted himself as the dominant runner. Everybody knows that he is. It's been a tough day for the Bolden family. Paul, the defensive tackle, is now being helped off the field. And Cliff, the left tackle, is playing with a bruised shoulder. And there's his brother, Cliff Bolden. He's the junior. Paul, the uh, defensive tackle, is a sophomore. And it sure looks like he is done for the day. And in a good deal of discomfort. Well, one thing that this does do, Charlie, and I'm not saying that this is certainly not what Matt, UMass wanted, but it does break up the rhythm a little bit of Georgia Southern. Yeah. I was looking on the sidelines. I saw Paul Johnson waving his arm in a circle like keep it going, keep it going, keep it going because we're in our rhythm. And so it is now first and 10. With the ball at the 19 yard line and a touchdown. Can get Georgia Southern back to within four. 
Hill keeps it. And gains maybe a couple. Kari Samuel, the senior captain, linebacker, makes the tackle. Charlie, that's an All-America play. Throughout the game, we have seen Hill make so many people miss and make so many people look foolish. Number 26 in the defense, the All-American Samuel, with over 140 tackles on the season, goes to the flank, is sitting there waiting for Hill and drops him in his tracks. This is the one person Mark Whipple said definitely would play on Sunday. On second down, and about eight yards to go. Keep it. And Hill is finally brought down at about the 10 yard line. It will depend on where they mark the ball. Very close to a first down. Charlie, I think he's going to be a little short, and I'll be interested in this call if only because the last time they ran the option and were able to get away with it because of the drop knee. If maybe this time they're not going to say, hey, let's just plow straight ahead. It'll be third and less than one. Paul Johnson, who has led his. Eagles to a 24 and 3 record in his two years. A uh, brief look at Mark Griffin. And here's Peterson inside the five, a first down. I'm going to tell you, Charlie, I'm impressed with that young man's strength. He was stood up in the hole by Dawson, but instead he keeps his legs moving and goes forward. Take a look. Clean shot at him, and what happens? Keeps the legs moving, slides off, gets the extra yardage. 5'10-207, almost a perfect physique for a running back. It is first and goal. Peterson down to about the three. A couple years ago, I remember someone saying when they were commenting about Walter Payton and they saw him in shorts, I took a look at his physique and he said that God decided to make himself a halfback. You know, when I look at number three there, I say to myself that. I, I mentioned it earlier in the telecast. That young man, it's a redshirt freshman, a redshirt freshman, Charlie, who is rushed now for well over 2,500 yards on the season. He's an interesting story. He's got a very significant speech impediment. He stutters badly, but he lets his feet do the talking. And he is down inside the three to the two yard line. I mentioned his brother. Mike Peterson is the outside linebacker for the Florida Gators. And when they were talking about having Adrian come here to Georgia Southern, Tracy Ham, remember him? Sure, had, had, you a, bet. Terif had Great. a terrific career in the uh, CFL. Sure did. Did a, a lot of talking to their head coach here, Paul Johnson, about bringing Adrian Peterson in. And uh, it's Tracy Ham, who is the conduit. Got the job done. And boy, are they ever happy to have Adrian Peterson. And now the full house backfield. And Ellis is going to take it himself, or rather Hill, and he's going to make it in for the touchdown. Greg Hill. And so now Georgia Southern is within five. Now the question is, do you go for two to get to within three? Charlie, I don't think you do. And I say that only because you've got an entire quarter to go. If you go for two here and you miss it, then you put yourself in a position where the mathematics are. You have to score a touchdown. You have to do this. Well, here's a bad extra point try. And they're going to not make it. 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. Zulo and Quinlan are standing deep, awaiting the kickoff of Chris Chambers. Chambers missed an extra point. And then a botched two-point conversion try. High, short kick, and that's Kevin Quinlan at the 10. Trying to find his way, some wiggle room up the sideline. He's brought out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. Huh? Well, with the swinging gate, they actually do end up going for two, but instead take a look at the lateral. The ball is dropped, and of course the Minutemen are right on top of it. But again, one of the things that's interesting here, Charlie, with regards to this third quarter, Massachusetts has had exactly three offensive plays this entire quarter. And so it's first and ten for UMass. Trying to get some momentum back on their side of the field. And Marcel Ship does so. Across the 40 to the 45-yard line. A pickup of 16 yards on the play. He just ran right over the top of Archie Thompson. The the safety who probably has tire treads on the front of his chest. Quarterback Greg Hill 
who has put up some impressive numbers today. Well, Charlie, I can't imagine I can't imagine he has cramps on a day like this. It's not warm enough. Maybe, as you pointed out, maybe he had more than one Snickers. What do you think? <laughs> 23 carries, 206 yards. He sure is fun to watch. We have come to the end of the third quarter. Already 71 points. Trailing 38-21 at the half, Georgia Southern came up with 181 yards of offense in the third quarter, controlling the ball 12 minutes and 13 seconds, scoring a dozen unanswered points, and now they're back to within five, and Marcel Chip on the first play of the fourth quarter is all the way down to the 32-yard line of Georgia Southern. Kawaki Thomas with the tackle, a pickup of 22 more yards. We, we had talked about his ability to cut back against the grain. Georgia Southern just flows to the spot that they anticipate. But Chip, there you can see, makes the big cutback, cut back to, cuts back again. Gets good blocking at the point of attack. 20 carries, 164 yards for the sophomore from Patterson, New Jersey. Marcel Ship, six feet, 195 pounds, and here comes Ship again. He's got some room down the sideline, and finally he is brought down at the five-yard line. Archie Thompson with the tackle, another 28 yards. Well, this is not what Georgia Southern was hoping for. Down five points, having scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. They felt as if if they could come out and maybe get a three and out instead Marshall ship has taken over cutting to the outside as you said Charlie had a chance to go the distance nice stiff arm there gets dragged down at about the five he is having a terrific game now 21 carries 192 yards and two touchdowns we're seeing two exceptional running backs today Quinlan now in the backfield the ship is on dry dock here's Quinlan he busts a tackle and finally is brought down at about the three yard line. Now downstairs to Lewis Johnson. Hey, Charlie, things getting busy down here. UMass defensive tackle Paul Bolden is out with the sprained right ankle. They tried to get him ready, but he won't make it back. But on the other side of the field, Georgia Southern quarterback Greg Hill suffering with those cramps. And now J.R. Revere, the backup quarterback, is warming up. Wow. That would be a big loss as Hill has been magnificent running the option today. Quinlan, second effort, did he get in? Yes, touchdown, UMass! What a huge drive for the Minutemen who are playing on their heels throughout the third quarter. But they come on strong to begin the fourth quarter. Five plays, 71 yards, and now the lead is 44 to 33. I mentioned that the onus had really fallen, fallen on the Massachusetts offense to come through. And certainly on that drive they did. All on the ground too, Charlie. 44-33, the extra point makes it 45-33. And the heavily favored Eagles are down by an even dozen. The kickoff is out of bounds, and so Georgia Southern gets a break, and they'll have excellent field position. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. And so the quarterback, Greg Hill, suffering with the cramps, is apparently okay, and he'll be coming out as he has a last-minute word with his head coach, Paul Johnson. The Georgia Southern squandered any number of opportunities in the first half but they made the most of their two possessions in the second half. 45-33, 78 points have been scored already. And we still have practically the entire fourth quarter to play. From the 35-yard line, Peterson, the single setback for Ellis. He can run, and he will run. Ellis fumbles a football, and I think UMass has it! Yes, they do. The turnovers that just killed the Eagles in the first half, and now here in the second half, the seventh turnover of the game, and it couldn't have come at a worse time. Brian Smith with the fumble recovery. Right here, take a look as Hill cuts up field. Can't quite get a hold of it, but give credit. That was I.E. Charlie yet again with the strip. Take a look at number 50. Right there, gets the right hand in there and strips Hill of the ball. Seventh turnover, amazing. If UMass could cash in a touchdown here, that just might be the killer. 
Oh, Georgia Southern, their high-powered offense. Whoa, look at that hole! Marcel shipped to the 20-yard line. Finally brought down by Archie Thompson, saving the touchdown. Charlie, I was about to say that the Minutemen are going to get seasick here because they're going to ride that ship here with the 13 minutes remaining. Take a look as they bunch in. Just poor job, poor job in the gaps by the front seven of Georgia Southern. Touchdown saving tackle, but ship is having a field. Run. 22 carries, 214 yards. Holston and Ship in the eye, and here is Ship again. This time to the 15-yard line. Georgia Southern, which came into the game with a record of 14 and 0. Their average margin of victory in the postseason was 24 points per game. Has never found themselves in this predicament, trailing by a dozen points in the fourth quarter all year. It's as if a fighter is stuck in the corner not knowing what hit him. Second down. And six. Just a couple. Well, I, I think they know what hit him, and it's number five. I mean, hit him square in the face. And that's ship. Coach, Coach Mark Whipple pointed out to us in our discussion yesterday that while Georgia Southern had been dominant, scoring the points, as, as you documented earlier, Charlie, he didn't think that Georgia Southern's defense was that exemplary, and certainly at this point in the fourth quarter, you'd have to concur with it. I asked him yesterday at the end of our uh, session, about an hour in his hotel suite. Do you expect this game to be 40, 35, something like that? He said, oh, I hope not. I hope we don't give up that many points to pass incomplete. Uh, and a flag on the play. The intended receiver, Kerry Taylor, and it will be interference. And Kawaki Thomas knew it. Kind of a skinny post route, a little bit of a slant by Taylor, getting into the back of the end zone. Paul Johnson seeing his perfect season in peril. You got the sense in spending time with the two teams yesterday. Which team was supremely confident? And the other, while they were more than happy to be here, they thought they could win this thing. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul, first down. But Georgia Southern, just there was almost a, an expectation of victory in talking to their coaching staff yesterday. So now it's first and goal at the three yard line. Chip and Holston now in the backfield. Chip, touchdown, you man. 51 to 33. Once again, Charlie, let's give credit where credit is due. Corey Mitchell, Mike Wynn, Yada Haygood, Tyler Laubach, Mim Hill, and Kerry Taylor. They're just pushing the Eagles out front there to enable that man, number five, Ship, to get his 200 plus yards. 26 carries, 223 yards, and three touchdowns for Marcel Ship. And the extra point for Jason Cherry. 52 to 33. Well, Mark Whipple in his first year at the University of Massachusetts after four seasons as a head football coach at his alma mater at Brown has turned a team that was two and nine a year ago into a team that is poised to win its first one double A college football championship. Now let's go downstairs to Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Hey, Charlie, you know, while the Minutemen try to win it down on the field, a national championship that is, the marching band has already taken care of business this year. They won the Lewis C. Sutler Trophy for Excellence. Now listen to this. These guys caught a charter flight at 3 a.m. this morning. They got here about 5, spent the night on a Florida gymnasium practice. This is the first time they've ever been on national television, so they are beyond excited, I guess. Congratulations yeah. to them, huh? I was going to say they're really subtle about it, too. <laughs> it is first down now at 10. They have plenty of reason to be happy. That is Diedrich Parham, and Parham has run out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A pickup of 13 on the play. 
trailing by 19 points. Georgia Southern has 11 minutes and 35 seconds left and three timeouts. They have not been trailing in the fourth quarter like this all year long. Trips out to the left side, or actually the right side, top of your screen. And that's Oral Grace coming back this way. Pass is overthrown, intended for Chevelle Simmons. Well, this is certainly going to test Hill's ability to throw the football, and he hasn't been put in this position, as you pointed out, Charlie, in a very long time, if ever. This is a team that does not pass a lot because it hasn't had to pass a lot. But why wouldn't they huddle here because the clock stopped anyway? Hill is just 5 of 11, 94 yards. That's Grace coming back this way again. Throwing. And Corey Joyner. Joiner stays in bounds, tackled at the 45. Should be enough for a first down. Got a good block downfield by Parham, using a 6'4", 200-pound frame to provide a shield for Joiner. So they get the first down. The clock will stop momentarily. 11-18 left in the game. 31 of UMass's 52 points have come off seven Georgia Southern turnovers. Seven of them. It's cost them 31 points. On first down. Hill's going to keep it and pitch it to Oral Grace. Audrell Grace gets out of bounds with 11.04 left. And that is Paul Bolden, 99. He sprained an ankle. In the third quarter, he is done for the day. And of course, this is the last game of the year. The Division One AA Championship is just 11 minutes and four seconds away. Hills to throw, steps up. Hills gonna run it. Hill to the 40, 35, cutting out of bounds and run out of bounds at about the 29 yard line. A pickup of 22 on the play, a first down, stops the clock with 10.54 to go. You got a quarterback that, that is that good of a runner, Charlie. He fades back and he's got all sorts of gaps in the secondary. If I'm Georgia Southern, maybe I think about going with the quarterback draw and just having him run the ball because he's spreading the people out so far. I mean, that's just as effective as his throwing the ball. Hill is rushed for over 200 yards today. Peterson over 100. First and 10. And not much of a gain on the play, maybe a couple. So Peterson is stopped. And the clock continues to run. Can't run fast enough for that man. Mark Whipple, his first year at UMass. I will say, though, they're doing a good job of preserving the time. This drive has only lasted about a minute so far. On second down. Here's the toss to Corey Joyner. He steps out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. Now, on two different occasions where they've had running plays, Charlie, they've been fortunate enough to get out of bounds. So, score a touchdown here and an onside kick, and who knows? Georgia Southern has scored 40 or more points 10 times this season. In three postseason games, they've averaged 400 and, or I'm sorry, 48 points per game, 519 yards of offense. And UMass is going to take a breather. We got a ways to go yet, Bob. 10 minutes, 17 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. UMass with his 52 points. Already a Division One AA championship game record. <laughs> Probably got one or two more possessions left in him. Right up the middle, Peterson. Inside the 15-yard line, he'll be spotted at about the 13, and that'll be another first down. Well, the timeout for UMass really benefited Georgia Southern, Charlie. I'm surprised that they did that because now they gave him a chance to call a couple of plays, and with the clock stopped in the first down, it gives Georgia Southern an advantage. But the clock now runs, just a shade over 10 minutes left in the game. That's Grace coming near side, Hill looking far side, throwing to Joyner, and Joyner is run out of bounds at about the 11-yard line, but Gerard White the corner. Clock stops, 9.56. 
Here's the dilemma now for Paul Johnson on offense. Do you throw into the end zone and put yourself in a situation where you have eight or nine yards to go? Or do you do what, you know, what got you here, which is run the ball and take off a little time? Second down, the clock will start up again with the snap. Here's Hill, he trips and falls at the 15-yard line. He loses about four on the play. Well, his feet just came out from under him. There he is right there. The right foot comes out from under him, down at 15, of course. Everyone's aware of college, you don't have to be touched. For those of you just joining us, we had a steady downpour here in Chattanooga up until about an hour before game time. Here's Hill in trouble, and down he goes at the 22-yard line. That's the first sack of the day for UMass. If ever there's a guy, Charlie, that I've watched in college football that would seem to be unsackable, this would be the guy. Now here's an interesting, here's what's interesting. They're going to go for the field goal under the idea that they can go for two on their touchdowns. That's the only thing I can think of, right? 16 plus three? Yeah. They trail by 19. And here's a field goal try of 38 yards for Chambers, His longest is 45, so it's it's makeable for him. It's on its way, and it is good. And so Georgia Southern trailing by 16 points. Now the question is, are they going to onside kick it? Well, the ball is set up to kick an onside. I can't believe it. Now UMass calls timeout. How could you not think that they're going to kick an onside with only eight and a half minutes remaining and down by 16 points? UMass had their normal kickoff return on the field, only five guys up front. And so now let's see if there will be the onside kick. And now they've got their hands team out. Got nine people and within Zulu. 10 yards, yeah. And Zulo is the deep back is only standing at the 15 yard line. So uh, UMass is certainly expecting an onside kick. Again, there's eight minutes and 39 seconds, and here is the onside kick. The ball is loose. It goes out of bounds. And so UMass will get the ball first and 10. Now, it's interesting. He did everything he needed to do. He got the kick. But Georgia Southern's left side wasn't quite quick enough to get downfield. This is what you need to do is get it past that first line. They do right there. Taylor can't, doesn't even touch it, can't even come up with it, but nobody is there. Thompson's the closest guy, and he couldn't get it. And so UMass will have the ball in excellent field position. First and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Georgia Southern has all three timeouts left. UMass has but one. 959 yards of total offense in this game. And 88 points. And we ain't done. Here's Ship to the 50. Picks up three on the play. Eric Davis makes the tackle along with Cortez Robinson. Charlie, at this point, one of the things that Georgia Southern just has to do is, hey, you know what? Put nine in the box, single cover the people on the outside because you have no choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ship continues to pile up the numbers, and at this rate, what's going to happen is that they're just going to run the clock out. They've got to get those nine people in the box. Consequently, if I'm UMass, I put in three wide receivers and make them cover everybody, spread the field out a little bit, and give Ship a few more running lanes. Georgia Southern, of course, has not had the play come from behind football, really, all year. There's been never a sense of desperation about their season. Here's Ship, and Ship on second effort is brought down at the 46 of Georgia Southern. 28 carries, 230 yards for Marcel Ship, and he is but a sophomore from Patterson, New Jersey. And when you're a young kid like that, Charlie, and you're having those kind of numbers, do you think about the possibility of saying, hmm, I'm only a sophomore, can I take it to the next level? Or do you stay, stay put? I think, you know, at, at the University of Massachusetts, he's got to stay put. You know, if he's at, uh, you know, a, a top 10, top 15, Division 1, A, University. That might be one. Okay. But he is certainly competing at a high level here today. Third down, no gain on the play. Vaughn Allen 
And Brian Wilson team up to make the tackle. Been a dog day afternoon for Georgia Southern. And I look can't at this. UMass that. is going for it. Uh, on fourth down and two. This is amazing. Can he pooch punt? Jimmy Moore in motion. Well, they're going to call a timeout. They were hoping that Georgia Southern might bite. And when they didn't, now we're going to see the punt by Andrew McCoy. Something I meant to mention earlier, Charlie, Kari Samuel, their All-American linebacker, interceptions, tackles. Check it out. He's their long snapper. Talk about some skills. They think he's going to be able to play on Sunday. Here's McClay's punt. It's a nice one. That's Joyner. He's going to run it from the 10 and down at the 12-yard line. What a play by Paul Tupa, a reserve wide receiver with a key tackle. And now, trailing by 16 points, Georgia Southern pinned back at their own 13-yard line, and they've got only two timeouts left. The sprinters from Massachusetts have been outstanding today, Charlie. They have gotten downfield, and written clearly, Massachusetts has won the battle of field position. So it's first and 10. And again, this is a team that has been running the ball four out of every five plays on the average this year. And now they're going to have to go through the air to preserve the clock. Here's Hill. Throwing, sideline, caught, out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Audrell Grace with the reception, but it was out of bounds. Second down. Couldn't quite get the feet down. And that's the face that I've seen all day long. It's one of those that it, 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 you, you feel as if it just wasn't meant to be. Seven turnovers. Never in his wildest dreams can I imagine that Paul Johnson thought that was going to happen. You know, a... We sit down with the coaches of uh, both clubs the day before the ball game. And you sit and chat for 45 minutes to an hour. And here is Hill tossing to Peterson. He does not get out of bounds, so the clock will continue to run. And so after a while, after the conversation has pretty much come to an end, you toss out a couple of throwaway questions. And here's a team that had been just pummeling its opposition all year, Paul Johnson's Eagles of Georgia Southern. And I said, do you know how to play desperation football? Do you know how to come from behind in the last two minutes? Oh, yeah. He hasn't had to. And now, all of a sudden, this is the position they find themselves in. And they're going to have to do it on the ground. I think I saw a flag fly in late, and that will likely be a penalty against Georgia Southern. Appeared to be a clip at the end by the wideout. That'll be brought back. Yeah, you know what, Charlie? You, you just don't know until you're put in the position. It's all well and good to say that you can, but if you, you know. They haven't had to. It, yeah, it's one thing to theorize. It's another thing to put it into practice. And especially when it's a fairly one-dimensional offense. That is to say, it's on the ground. And the ground, of course, eats up the clock. You know, one of the, thing, the, the comparisons that I see, Charlie, just for the sake of Look at that scoreboard. <laughs> it's, Look at that. It, it's full. That's 406, 284. That's 690 yards of offense. What I was about rushing. To, what I was about to say is this. This reminds me, Charlie, a little bit of the last Super Bowl. In so much that you know Green Bay was a prohibitive favorite. Everybody just assumed that they were going to win. And Mike Shanahan during the week, not unlike Mark Whipple, said, "Now you know what? Be careful because." Everybody's already given them the title, and we can play free and loose, and Marcel Ship has been there, Terrell Davis. Indeed, he has been today. 690 yards of rushing between these two teams today. Here's Hill throwing long down the sideline, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Diedrich Parham, and he was man for man with Brian Smith, the strong safety. Good play by Smith. Getting up and making sure that absolutely nobody gets the ball. Batting it out of bounds. And so it is fourth down. So Georgia Southern. Perhaps down to their last play. And 
again, the only way that they've been able to generate any serious yardage today. 284 on the ground. And here is Hill, and he's going to run it. I don't know he got it. I don't know that he got it. He may have been run out of bounds just shy of the first down marker. It's the same name that we've been calling all game long, Charlie, in terms of big plays. Coley I.E. bumps him out of bounds just in front of the first down marker. Yes, he did. What a play and what a day for Coley I.E. And so now UMass will take over first and ten at the Georgia Southern 22 yard line with five minutes and 25 seconds to go. Paul Johnson. Inevitably when you see Hill you know that once he breaks contain that he's just not going to get caught but instead take a look at the burst of speed by IE as he bumps him out just short of the marker just a tremendous effort by this young man scored a touchdown recovered a couple of fumbles stripped for another fumble just a great great game by number 50. And so now it looks like the UMass Minute the Cinderella's have come to this division one double A championship ball. 10 tackles, three fumble recoveries, and the tackle that ran Hill out of bounds, preventing a first down and giving UMass the ball deep in Georgia Southern territory. And here is Ship, and he is down to the 12 yard line. Let's take a look at the running back, Adrian Peterson. Meanwhile, his uh, counterpart continues to get it done down to the eight yard line. Let's go downstairs now to Lewis Jones. Hey Charlie, you know this week Mark Whipple said he didn't have anything fancy to say about trying to win a championship tonight, but he told his players just to follow the pattern. The pattern he's talking about is of losses and wins. You know, they lost their first game to Delaware, then they won four games straight. They lost a game to Connecticut, won four more games. They lost to Connecticut again, and if they win tonight, this will be the fourth win in a row, and, and Coach told them before the game, if you go out here and win this, this game tonight, following the pattern, you'll be national champions. Looks like it's about to happen. Yeah, he told us that line of thinking yesterday. You know, won four, lose one, won another four, lost another, won another four, lost another, and now this will be the fourth one. And I kiddingly said to him, that's the stuff Rockney's made of, you know? <laughs> but, you know, mathematically, he's on to something here in the UMass Minutemen who were two up and nine down last year. They brought the coach in from Brown, Mark Whipple. And in his first year, he has turned the program not only around, but on the verge of its first ever Division I-AA National Championship. 500 fans came down from Amherst. Over 10,000 came up from Statesboro, Georgia to look at the Eagles. Here's Schiff, and this time he's going to be tackled for a loss back at the 11-yard line. And so this rags-to-riches Cinderella story from Amherst, Massachusetts, in an athletic program that, frankly, is mostly thought of in basketball terms, where Julius Irving first came to prominence, and then John Calipari and Marcus Camby and those Minutemen teams. And now, how interesting is it that they've got a basketball coach named Bruiser, and Mr. Whipple is the uh, college football coach. <laughs> One thing I thought interesting, too, when we talked with him is that he was avoiding all, as best he could, the hoopla surrounding it in the press because there were far too many people that were jumping on the bandwagon late in the season. And he said he didn't want any part of that. He said he wanted to focus on his team and the game, and certainly that has produced some tremendous results. He's a real blue-collar kind of guy, is Mark Whipple. Grew up outside uh, New York in Tarrytown, but when he was nine or ten years old, his folks moved out to Arizona. But he played his college football at Brown. He became their head football coach at Brown, where he had four very solid seasons. And then he got the job here at UMass, and in his very first season, he is on the verge of leading the Minutemen to a 12-3 and record, their best ever and to their first ever Division One AA National Championship. Classmate of one of your buddies, wasn't he? Chris Berman, and he went to school together at Brown. And they still remain friends. And Chip gets to the 10 yard line, and at this point the clock is Mark Whipple's best friend. Well, there's a situation now where they have everybody jammed in the box that 
bank head, if you felt like it, could bootleg and go the distance. And there's Adrian Zulo reporting back into the game. Zulo at five feet, seven inches, and 138 pounds, but he can fly. Last year, the national 100 meter champion in high school, and the freshman of the year this year in the Atlantic 10. Well, here's Chip again, and he is brought down inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. It is third down and goal, and so the clock continues to run. Now it's fourth down. Now what do you do here? Kick the field goal or maybe go for it just to take some time off the clock? I mean, or maybe what you want to do is kick the field goal so you can give Cherry some future confidence. <laughs> well, he'll have, a nice, yeah, he'll have a nice long year to be confident. <laughs> well, they're in no great hurry, are they? Clock continues to run two and a half minutes left. I suppose you go for the field goal, make it uh, but now, 19. Now Bankhead's next to the official saying, let it bleed down to one and I'll call timeout. And and that's, that's exactly what he just did. You go ahead and you have the 19 points and they're not going <laughs> to score three touchdowns in two minutes and 25 seconds with one timeout left. So Georgia Southern is about ready to run out of pieces on the chessboard. They're pretty near checkmated. <laughs> who were not even expected to win the Atlantic 10 conference this year. There's the man right there, Coley IE. He has been fantastic. What a great one. He has had an extraordinary day. IE, a sophomore, he's only six feet, 217 pounds. And so here comes the field goal try for Jason Cherry. It will be a 25 yarder on the hash mark to the right. And there's a flag on the play. The kick is good. It's been a cloudy, cold, damp afternoon. I think it's, prob it's, it's probably off sides. It is, and I suspect that they'll take the points. Good call. And take the lead to 19. And we still have two minutes and 21 seconds to go here. And a little squiver. Fielded by Derek Williams. And Williams is brought down shy of the 40-yard line. Keep talking about number 50, Coley IE, and all the things that he has done today. Well, he's done quite a few things. Quite a few big plays. He's the one that makes the scoop here and goes in for the touchdown. Later, he tips a pitch in great anticipation and recovers the fumble himself. Here, he knocks Hill out of bounds in a fourth down play that would have given Georgia Southern a first down. That's a game that he will always, always remember. And all the folks of Nashua, New Hampshire, his hometown, are proud of him today, too. And here's J.R. Revere throwing, and he completes it to Ashley Morgan. And for Ashley Morgan, just his second reception of the season. That's a great name. I love that name. J.R. Revere. Mm -hmm. Great name for an athlete or an actor. Think about that for a while. On first down, here's Revere rolling and running out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with a minute and 55 seconds. They trail by 19. They've got one timeout left, and it appears to be a lost cause for Greg Hill. But what an afternoon he had. 237 yards as the linchpin of this option veer offense of Georgia Southern. But not unlike Peterson, Charlie, who also put together some big numbers. A couple of fumbles, very costly. Wish he could have him back, no doubt. Seven turnovers today for Georgia Southern, and that just killed him. Here's Revere throwing a nice ball down the sideline, but overthrowing is intended receiver Corey Joyner to win its 15th and final game to complete a perfect season. But it just hasn't worked out that way. As a UMass Minuteman, as Ashley Morgan is unable to hold on to the ball that was thrown behind him. The UMass Minutemen, who last year were two and nine, brought in that man, Mark Whipple. And he has not only turned around a program, 
He has turned it into a championship team in his very first year. The last four years, head coach at his alma mater, Brown. And before that, he was the coach at Division II New Haven, where he had a very successful tenure. Now here's Revere to throw. And now running for dear life. Got himself a first down inside the 30-yard line. Clock will stop momentarily as they move the chains. You know, you mentioned Greg Hill. The easy answer to the question is you say to yourself, yeah, well, good. You know, he's a junior. He'll be back. He'll have another shot at it. But how hard is it to get to this point? See, that's the thing that you think about. It's so difficult to get to this point. Here's Revere's toss. Out of bounds. Minute and 24 seconds left. And Paul Johnson, who until this ball game in his two seasons at Georgia Southern, had led the Eagles to a 24 and 3 record. Now it will fall to 24 and 4. A win away from a perfect season in a Division I AA National Championship, but not this year. Here's Revere to throw. Screen pass. And that is Peterson. Peterson, flag on the play. Peterson still on his feet. He goes in for the touchdown. But let's see. There's a flag on the play and likely against Georgia Southern. Good call with the screen pass. And great open field running on the part of Peterson as he broke a number of tackles. The holding is going to bring it back. That's what kind of a day it's been for Paul Johnson and his Georgia Southern Eagles. Seven turnovers. Gave away 31 points to UMass. UMass in this postseason has had to win every single playoff game on the road. And Mark Whipple with that demeanor, he's yet to smile. He's got a feel right here with about a minute 12 left and up 19 if they're the champs. And so on second down, Revere going to run it. He's got some room. Revere is going to score the touchdown. Well, he can run just like his... Counterpart Greg Hill, 29 yards, the touchdown, 55 to 42. So that is now 97 points between these two teams. And Don and Don Brown, defensive coordinator for UMass, opted for a blitz and man coverage. And of course, once you're in the secondary and the corners have their back to the quarterback, if he breaks contain, that's it. And that's what happened there. Revere showing, as you pointed out, some great foot speed, not unlike the starter Hill. Mm -hmm. And so the extra point try, Chris Chambers. Although there appears to be some chicanery on the offensive line at the moment. I just think they didn't have somebody out there that needed to be. Well, like he's there now. And the kick is good. And so 98 points have been put on the board today. Have you ever have you ever broadcast a game that had this many points? Let's see, 51, 45, 96. When the Jets and Dolphins played in oh, 1986, yeah, yeah. that right. uh, that overtime game. Yep. yep. Well, I did arena football two years ago. So <laughs> I'm, I'm used to these big numbers, but not not at this level. Well, that was a day when Ken O'Brien and. Uh, Dan Marino went off. Oh, yeah. And it and the Jets tied the game on the final play of regulation. Little uh, post pattern to Wesley Walker on final play. Then they got the extra point. And then the uh, Jets won it on a uh, bomb from O'Brien to Walker. Walker. Oh, man. That was, you know what? That was one of Al Davis' biggest mistakes. Wesley Walker was legally blind in his yeah, right eye. That's exactly right. Coming out of Cal Berkeley. And, and they told him, and he says, no, we can't draft him. And, of course, oops, he came back to haunt him. Well, this is the first game I think I've ever been involved with where there's been over 1,000 yards of total offense. 1,060. Now, if they recover the onside kick, we'd have a shot at 100 points. Yeah, we would, wouldn't we? Well, here comes the onside kick. 
And it's up in the air, and it's still in the air, and it's knocked out of bounds. And so UMass will hang on to the ball. So this afternoon, the University of Massachusetts has 465 yards of total offense. Georgia Southern has 595 yards, 595 yards of total offense, and they're losing. They're losing by a dozen. But My, seven turnovers will kill you. I'm going to take a guess. I, I could be way off here. But for a team that has rushed for 400, has there ever been a team that's rushed for 448 yards and lost? <laughs> there aren't many that no. have rushed for 286 and lost. And that is the situation in which Georgia Southern finds themselves in. It's been a long day for the Eagles. But what a day for the University of Massachusetts and 41-year-old Mark Whipple. There he gets it. Oh, boy. Feeling miserable can't feel any better than that, huh? Getting an ice bath on a day like this. And what a stunning turnaround, as you pointed out, Charlie, to go from 2-9 and nine to a national championship. Absolutely amazing. And doing every one of these four playoff games on the road. It has been a remarkable turnaround for the University of Massachusetts. Two up and nine down a year ago, and now they are the division. One double-A champion.